If you just want to find a product to sell on Amazon, then this is not the video for you. Rather, this is going to be a strict product research tutorial on finding one specific type of product, what in my opinion is the highest potential and likely to be the most profitable type of product. And as always, if you enjoy the video, please drop it a quick like for me. And if you like our content, subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you as part of the community, but let's jump straight in. We are focusing on product discovery today. That is coming up with the idea, not actually evaluating those results. So this is going to show you exactly how to approach and start your research. Step number one, this is the battle plan. We need a strategic approach to research and this is going to give us our base criteria. And for this specific research, we are only going to be focusing on products that provide us with ease of profitability, ease of PPC ROI and ease of unique product creation. Let's start with the first one, ease of profitability. Since many physical product expenses are based on the volume of that product, that is the size and weight, they're not actually related to the price. One of the easiest ways to build room into your margin is to sell products that sell at a higher sell price. So we're only gonna be focusing on products that we can sell to customers for above $45. Second, ease of PPC ROI. Now ad spend can actually be the difference between a successful and unsuccessful product. And this is becoming even more prevalent these days with the rise in cost per click when you're running PPC or advertising your products on Amazon. So we are gonna be focusing on the categories of products where those categories afford us the best possible PPC performance. In other words, lower ACOS on average, lower cost per click on average, etc. And there are actually big differences here. Here's an example. Beauty and personal care has an average ACOS of 44.1%, average cost per click of 92 cents. Whereas if you compare that to tools and home improvement, that has an average ACOS of 24.8% and a cost per click of just 64 cents. Essentially what that means is on average, if your product's listed in tools and home improvement, your advertising is twice as profitable and your cost per click or how much you pay every time a customer clicks your ad is almost 30% less. Now, also considering the average sell price of products in these categories, the average order value, along with the PPC performance, we are only going to be focusing on these categories. And you can learn exactly how I selected those categories in this video up here. Of course, you can widen the categories that you do for your research, but it is worth knowing these are some of the best for PPC performance. And third, ease of unique product creation. Now a crucial aspect of FBA is offering customers a better and unique product of your own. If you just sell what's already there, then you have to compete with things like review counts or even worse, price point. Think about when you shop for a product. Sometimes you just want the lowest price. Sometimes you use review counts to quickly make your decision. But other times you scrutinize products, you look between them, you look at their attributes and features and functionality. And we are looking for the latter type where customers spend more time on this decision and they value that uniqueness. And one of the product types that is easiest in terms of that, in terms of developing it further and where that development is valued by customers is giftable products. And so based on this, I'm going to narrow down and focus only on these three categories. And again, you can learn more about how I evaluated the giftability of those in this video up here. But now we have our battle plan. Before we move on to two, I want to explain a principle that I've come up with to distinguish between looking at individual products and their markets. When you're doing product research, you're actually looking for a high potential market not product. So picture an iceberg. The whole iceberg is a market full of products. Now the majority of the products in the market is the mass of the iceberg and that's actually beneath the water's surface. But one individual product is also part of this market but it is visible and this is the tip of the iceberg above the surface. 
And so when you begin your research, you're actually finding an individual product. That is, you are finding the tip of the iceberg. But once you do find the tip of the iceberg, that individual product, you can then look at the rest of the market. You can evaluate the rest of the iceberg beneath the water surface. And step two, this is to find the tip of the iceberg. So we now want to find individual products in line with our criteria that could lead us to high potential products. And we are looking for a giftable product in one of these three categories that we can sell to customers for above $45. Use this as a basis for the criteria that you input to a product research database. You can see in this example, what I did is also put in gift as a title keyword for this research. That is going to return results which are likely giftable. Once you gain results from the search, it's important that you look at each of these as the tip of the iceberg. Because remember, each market is like an iceberg and all you can see currently is the tip of that iceberg. So a product might have very low reviews here, the individual product you're looking at, but once you go through to that market, you see massive review counts. And so that single product was just an outlier, just as an example but we cannot establish if this is high potential or not until we actually evaluate the rest of the market, the rest of the iceberg. But at this point, you wanna find five iceberg tips, and we found these five products. An engraved compass, a floating golf green, a woman's tool set, an outdoor ball game, an inflatable boxing bag. And now that we have the tips, we need to find the rest of the market. And to do this, you wanna copy the ASIN of each of these products. Then you wanna go over to Cerebro. Here, we're gonna run a reverse ASIN search. So let's take the woman's tool set as an example here. We're gonna copy that ASIN, open Cerebro, drop in the ASIN and search. And this tool will tell you which keywords this product performs well for. As you can see here, this product is actually ranking organically very, very well for these specific keywords. Next though, we need to determine which of these is the best representation of this iceberg, of this market. And that is, which one is searched the most by customers, highest search volume? Because we know that other competitors in this market are going to wanna rank for that. They're gonna wanna be in front of those customer searches. Therefore, by using the highest demand keyword here, highest search volume, we're gonna get the most accurate picture of this market or iceberg. And so looking at the search volume column here, we can see that tool sets for women is likely the best term. So take that keyword, type it into Amazon as a customer, and do make sure your address on Amazon is set just like a local customer in that marketplace. And this is the point at which we can see the rest of the iceberg. We can see the entire market because all of the competitors are shown here. And so now we can evaluate whether or not this market actually shows potential. Do you remember you are doing this for each of your five? So as an example, when we repeated this for the outdoor game, we found it was Spikeball Pro Set or when we did it for the boxing bag, we found it was inflatable boxing bag. Typing those terms in revealed the rest of that market. Step three, evaluate the iceberg. With the market in front of you on Amazon, skip the sponsored results at the top and focus on the first 10 organic results. This one is the first organic result here. And the higher a product ranks organically in a market, generally the better that product sells. And so by looking at these results at the top, you can determine which products customers are choosing to buy the most. For example, is that based on the lowest price or is it based on the highest review counts? Both of which would be red flags. They would not be good for you because you don't wanna compete on price. You don't wanna compete on reviews when you don't have many of them. And so if you see some low review count, high sell price products towards the top, that's a good sign. You know customers are choosing these. They're likely choosing them not because of the low price, obviously, or high review counts, obviously. They're choosing them based on something else, likely product design. 
style, creativity, uniqueness, and that is what you're looking for. Next, you want to open a Chrome extension such as Helium 10's X-Ray, and this allows you to evaluate three primary things. One, price maintenance, which really means does this market support the price level we want to sell at? So are at least three sellers selling well at or above the $45 sell price level? Here, this is confirmed. Number two is review dependence. This really means how much are customers relying on reviews to make their decisions? Are customers only buying from high review counts here? Or are they also buying from lower review counts? We want a market where customers buy based on product design, not review counts. And here we see customers buying from lower review counts. Three is fees. The FBA fulfillment and Amazon referral fees are added together for a total FBA fee here. So each time you sell a product on Amazon, that is the fee you are going to pay Amazon. Of course, the lower this fee is relative to the sell price, the better that's going to improve profit margins. If we look at the boxing bag product, immediately we see price pressure with a lot of products selling at much lower prices. So this would be an unfitting market. And if we look at the outdoor game product, what you'll notice is that customers tend to buy most from high review listings. They're using this as the primary indicator of what to buy, meaning this is also an unfitting market. This is a great example of how just seeing the iceberg does not give you the full picture. You need to evaluate the market and that will tell you whether or not the market is high potential. If we look at the engraved compass, here the sell prices are slightly lower across the board, but the reviews are also low. We also see the higher priced products with lower review counts achieving decent sales volumes. Although not at the $45 price, we do see these higher priced products outselling the lower priced ones, indicating that customers are choosing based on product design and maybe using price as an indicator of quality. So there may be an opportunity to sell a premium product here for between $40 and $50. Now the goal of this video is strategic. It's not actually to give you ideas, but there are two potential markets. The best market for that higher price point with a lot of development options, but with more competition and which is a slightly larger product is the tool set for women. And the best market with a slightly lower sell price but with less competition, lower review counts, and it is a smaller product with, I would say, an even better gifting angle is the engraved compass. At this point, you want to discard your weaker markets and only move forward with the highest potential. Step four is to track the icebergs. With only the best remaining markets, add all of the details to your product funnel, which you can download for free below this video. This will allow you to evaluate every aspect of these markets, cover all of your bases, and then make final decisions once everything is filled in. But if you wanna know more about that, you can learn about it in this step-by-step -step video, which you can follow along with as you actually do this. And step five is to choose your product. After all those details are filled in, you can do an in-depth evaluation especially on how much can you actually valuably differentiate and develop this product further. Also, profit margins, which are very telling. And between those two aspects, you should find a clear winner. But this video focuses only on product discovery. But do comment below for me if you would like a part two, which I dedicate to the next stage of the research process. If enough of you want it, we will do it. If you enjoyed this super targeted approach to product research, please drop this video a quick like for me. Also, don't forget to quickly subscribe to the channel so we don't get lost down the YouTube rabbit hole. And a quick reminder that I train sellers just like you in a professional online e-commerce school called Amazon FBA Mastery. So if you wanna learn every single step of this business, videos, over 100 videos that hold your hand through every single stage, definitely check that out in the pinned comment below and the first link in the description. And lastly, comment below for me on your minimum sell price, like the rock bottom sell price that you would sell a product for on Amazon and why. And I will catch you in the next video.